Now, nitroglycerin and quite a lot of other explosives decompose in a very different way from gunpowder. Gunpowder essentially burns. People in the trade use a fancy Latin word for it, deflagration, but it means no more than burns. In the case of nitroglycerin, however, the mechanism is very different. Not only does that material contain much more chemical energy for a given mass, but also it decomposes very much more quickly, and this makes the explosion much more violent. This type of very violent explosion is called a detonation. Although low explosives like gunpowder burn quickly, high explosives go off a thousand times faster. To capture a moment of detonation on film requires a camera that can run at a million frames per second. Historically, uh, the term high explosive uh, refers to an explosive which is actually detonating whereas the term a low explosive refers to something that's merely burning very fast. And that can be very fast, that, that, that could be burning at speeds of maybe uh, a thousand meters per second, but it's still just a fast burn. It isn't actually detonating. The process of detonation is a very specific and, and different phenomenon. In a detonation you have a supersonic shockwave traveling through the explosive, and the shockwave itself triggers the reaction immediately behind it. So the, the decomposition is not caused by the conduction of heat forwards, it's, it's caused directly by the passage of the shockwave. So a detonation is a, is a shockwave supported by chemical reaction just behind it, and it occurs at, at a supersonic speed in the material. The father of high explosives was Alfred Nobel, a Swedish industrialist. In the 1850s, gunpowder was the only available explosive. So the commercial potential for something more powerful, like nitroglycerine, was clear. But perhaps its tendency to explode without warning made it too dangerous to handle. Danger has never been a deterrent among scientists that are obsessed by following an object to its end. On the contrary, it can provide a powerful stimulant for them to tame a dangerous uh, substance or instrument. If you look at the work with the atom bomb and so on, you find the same uh, Madame Curie in radium and so on. They knew it was very, very dangerous, but they still kept at it. Alfred realized that unless nitroglycerin could be detonated reliably, it had no future. He experimented with the idea of using a small gunpowder charge to act as a detonator. These prototypes were like giant bangers with a long fuse. It was a significant breakthrough. Without the invention of the detonator, handling high explosives would have remained a perilous act. Although nitroglycerine was now much safer to set off, it remained a hazardous substance to manufacture. Alfred Nobel and his family began producing nitroglycerine by the bucketful. He was tempting fate. In 1864, a violent explosion destroyed the laboratory, killing his younger brother, Emil. Alfred was devastated, but refused to halt work on the evil oil. One might guess that he was in fact trying to conquer the enemy that had killed his younger brother's life and to render this beast harmless. And uh, of course, uh, his personality being what it was, he went on regardless of criticism or, or objection from his family and so on, because the true scientist often has a manical side to him. In the next 10 years, 
he built dozens of nitroglycerin factories. Few survive today, most have blown up. This one in Norway is a working museum. Inside the reaction vessel, cooling coils kept the chemistry under control. But if the temperature rose by even a few degrees, it was time to run. All around the nitroglycerin plant, you will see uh, barriers uh, built, the built barriers to protect uh, against uh, fragments because uh, sometimes they had explosions and of course uh, these explosions would then uh, cause a lot of uh, wooden pieces being thrown for hundreds of yards uh, through the air. To help avoid accidents, open pipes and gravity controlled the flow of nitroglycerin. Pumping was out of the question. Friction between moving metal parts would be fatal. The abbreviation of uh, nitroglycerin is NGL. That's why this strange uh, device here is called uh, um, angel boogie. There are no uh, moving metal parts. You see a rubber seal here, rubber pipe, uh, a wooden clamp. Uh, and the nitroglycerin was then transported to the next production house. Raw nitroglycerin does not like being moved. In the 1860s, it was killing so many people that it was giving Nobel a bad name. Nitroglycerin was banned in Britain. He had to find a way of quenching the oil and tried absorbing it on inert powders. One of the most successful was a porous white earth called kieselgur, which could absorb four times its own weight of nitroglycerin. This was Nobel's most famous invention, dynamite. It was used for rock blasting everywhere and made him one of the richest men in the world. Even though Nobel's business empire was huge, he never stopped experimenting. One night, he was woken by a sore cut on his finger. He dressed it with a protective film of nitrated cotton, a preparation called New Skin. This gave him the idea of mixing a similar solution with nitroglycerin. The result was blasting gelatin, which retained the power of nitroglycerin and was safer than dynamite. It is still used today. The explosive we're using here in the concrete cantilevers is Shellamax, which is a nitroglycerin-based explosive. It's more forgiving, as, as we say in the industry, than a lot of other explosives because it will forgive you if you don't handle it quite so, it will still get the job done. It's got a lot of power, a lot of uh, shattering ability, and the cantilevers we're dealing with are highly reinforced. They're carrying a tremendous load of the 17-story building above it. So with all that reinforcing steel, we needed to be sure that we, we took the cantilevers out. We've got about 1,570 separate charges in the building, and they're all wired together in what is called parallel series. Once we push the button, all of them go off, on a given cue. Okay. The center will be the first point of motion, the center of the structure, and it will walk this way. And the point is, it will move when it's ready. We simply give it a, a bit of a push, and we wait for the structure to respond, and then our timing with, with delays moves just ahead of what the structure is likely to do. We, we call it cajoling, forceful persuasion. That's what explosives are all about. They're a catalyst, nothing more. fascination that people have with explosive demolition is very similar to the fascination that people have with car crashes at racetracks.
People like to flirt with danger. They like to flirt with death. And uh, when they see a building coming down, they're doing just that. Uh, they come out, who knows, maybe see us mess up. Well, hopefully they've got a long wait. Explosives are tools. It's a tool that affects everyone's life. People don't realize that the highways that, that they ride on, the, the buildings that they live and, and work in, were partially put there with explosives, the quarrying operations to make the concrete. People don't think about explosives as being an everyday thing.